precious scriptures here. In John 14, and I want to go to a very familiar passage in John 14, in light of where we've come to through the book of Revelation, I want to go back and read this. John 14, verse 1. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me, said the Lord Jesus. In my Father's house are many mansions. In the NIV it reads many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself that where I am, there you may be also. What a wonderful promise from the Lord Jesus Christ to us today. The place prepared will be finished. The new Jerusalem will come down out of heaven from God the Lord's house is for the Lord's people. You believe in God? Amen. Jesus said, believe also in Him. You believe He's gone away and He's going to come back and take you to Himself. That's what He promised. The attitude of God's people throughout all generations has been what we find in Hebrews 11, looking for a city. Look, look at Hebrews 11. And this is in reference to faithful Abraham, verse 8. Hebrews 11, verse 8. By faith, Abraham. Obeyed when he was called to go to the place which he would receive as an inheritance. And he went out, not knowing where he was going. By faith he dwelt in the land of promise, as in a foreign country, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob. The heirs with him of the same promise. And here it is, verse 10. Look closely. He waited for the city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. What a wonderful promise. Example that Abraham gave to us. Our, our lives are no different, you know. We, um, um, our world is different. Uh, there were cities built all throughout history in great cities, but nothing like we see in the world today. The great cities of the world today. When you have a New York or a Seoul, right? Or a Tokyo. Or a Mumbai in India. Or a Dubai in the Persian Gulf. The great cities of the world where Millions and millions of people are gathering in Beijing or Shanghai. They're all functioning and living in these cities. But yet something seems wrong. There's a, you know, something's wrong. And there's a fear that's going on the moment that people have in the cities of our world. That fear will be totally gone in the New Jerusalem. None of that fear any longer. None of the chaos of the cities or the fighting and the violence of the cities of our world today. The struggle or the, the tragedy that happens in our cities when an earthquake hits or a, a tsunami comes through and wipes out a city or, or like we saw in the southern part of the United States, whole towns just destroyed this week and, uh, by hurricane winds. New Jerusalem will have none of that. None of it. Gone forever will be the tragedy and the heartache and the loneliness that modern cities bring. 
gone forever. So, the attitudes of God's people throughout all generations, they're looking for the city whose builder and maker is God. Hallelujah. The bride of Christ will forever be with the bridegroom. There's this confidence in our faith and hope for eternal life that we're longing for to forever be with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God's people have always had their place of worship. Adam had, had his garden. Noah had his altar. Abraham had his Mount Moriah. Moses had the tabernacle in the desert. Solomon in Israel had the great temple. Jesus worshipped in, in Herod's temple. Had to clean it up a bit, but he worshipped in Herod's temple. We have the church. The tribulation and millennium had their temple, but the near Jerusalem will have no need of the temple because God Almighty, Lord God Almighty, and the Lamb are its temple. Hallelujah. We'll worship there. One question for you. Will you be an inhabitant of this new Jerusalem? Let's pray together. Father, we just come to you in, in awe. How can we describe something like this? We can just repeat what you've said. We can look at the scriptures, Lord, but we can feel what Abraham felt, looking, longing, traveling, anticipating the city whose builder and maker is God. Lord, how can we describe the beauty of this place, the magnificent light, it's going to shine through the jeweled walls and the crystal streets of gold. The magnificent beauty of it all. The peace and joy that will rule and reign in that city. An earthly city has never known a new Jerusalem. No more tragedy or death, heartache or sorrow, but a place where your people can live forever. We long for this place. Lord, come, Lord Jesus, come. We long for this place. We're reminded there are so many that are not prepared for the coming of the Lord. Father, help us to do what we can now to help others know you and to come to know you. Help us, Lord, to be found faithful in our city, in our place, in this time now, to hold forth the word of life, to shine it, Lord, thank you. Thank you for this church, for the people here. I pray that each one, each person here today will know the joy and the peace of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and looking for the city prepared by God. Lord, I thank you for the blood of Christ that was given for our sin and that the Lamb will be with His bride forever. Lord, here we are, needing you to help us again as always. I pray and thank you for this time together. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.